be seated. We serve a mighty God, amen? He is wonderful. He is awesome. He's majestic. He loves you. He's worthy to be praised. There's nothing more valuable. You know, Pastor Tony was talking about seed time and it's about the kingdom. You cannot buy the anointing. Listen to what I'm telling you. You cannot pay for principles, but you can tap into principles. You can tap into the presence of God. You can open yourself up for the Holy Spirit to work and move and have His way and have His being in you. But you can't buy it. You can't earn it. It's a gift. It's free. But you and I need to receive it. Amen. And that's why I want to share some things this morning with you all. It's so good to see you all. Looks like a whole lot of new faces. It's quite a, kind of balanced the auditorium. If we were a boat, we'd be pretty balanced, I'd say. There's a bit of a hole in the middle, but that's probably where the air pocket is. You'd want it there for a reason that we stay afloat. Um, so I think it was well coordinated or strategically aligned, or you guys were all led by the Spirit this morning. I love it. Tony, we've got a church that's led by the Spirit, my friend. And it's so good to have you yeah, with us. Um, you know, you're such a blessing. And I've, 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 I haven't got to know you as well as a lot of people may. But one thing I know is I see a servant on you. You're the highest level of servant that I know because not only are you successful in your own right in your businesses, but you lay your life down to serve the man of God. And I honor you for that, my friend. And there's some things I'll overlook, like you do write an Indian, um, but we could call you a gentleman. Um, and, you know, narrow is the path home. You know, so there's a lot of Harley Davidsons out there. So you know, maybe Indian is the narrow path that leads us home. I'm praying about it at the moment, my friend. So, so good, good to have you with us. I do have a Harley in my garage. You do? Yes. Okay, good. So he's well balanced. He's a well balanced man. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Amen. Awesome. We need to get a ride in. Maybe one day when we come visit you, we'll get some Texas rides in. I know there's nothing to look at but road, which is awesome. So uh, <laughs> it's awesome. Why else would you want to look at anything else on a motorcycle, right? Uh, God is good. God is good. I, I really, I, I had something stirring in my heart for the last few weeks. And the Lord led me to some other stuff and has been leading us down a pathway. But I felt before we moved on, He wanted me to address something this morning. And He wanted me to talk about heavenly language. Because there's a big misunderstanding about this heavenly language or this gift that we have. And I want to hopefully align a few things this morning. You know, the Word of God is there, but He says use it with balance, use it with wisdom. Um, and it's effective, but it's a gift for us. And we can't reject the gift, amen? It's a gift from above. We can't reject it. But God says, use it with wisdom. It's a weapon of your warfare. It's a tool of the trade. Amen. And we're going to touch on some things this morning. So, Father, I just thank you this morning. I thank you, Lord, that you give me utterance. I pray, Lord, that every, every person's heart will be open. Here, live stream, wherever it's going, Father. I pray for hearts to be open, Lord. I thank you that you are busy doing something in these times we are in, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that nothing happens but by your Spirit. So I thank you, Lord, that we learn how the Spirit operates, that we can operate in the fullness thereof, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The last few weeks we've been talking about, um, you know, all in, that the work of the ministry is for the saints. We're all called to the work of the ministry, not just the fivefold ministry. And if you haven't listened to that, I encourage you to go back and listen to it. But I've also touched on the empowerment of the Holy Spirit empowered by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, before you go, wait till you're clothed with power. Had nothing to do with salvation, but it had to do with the baptism of the Holy Ghost upon us, which equips us to do the work of the ministry. Amen? Amen? The Bible's pretty clever in the way it outlines stuff, and we just have to follow the blueprint, and we'll have what it says we can have. Amen? Amen. Uh, we heard from Pastor Ian, uh, I think it was last week or the week before, about how to hear the voice of the Lord. You know, we need to hear and cooperate with what I believe is one of the most forgotten or misunderstood or ignored person in the body of Christ is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, I'm sending somebody to help you. But along with that comes giftings. Along with that comes tools that he says, yeah, you're going to need these things. But we look at them and we say, no, we don't like that. We don't like that. Tear that out the word. And we end up being defeated or not walking in the level we should be walking in. You'll get that. So Jesus told us in Luke 24, 49, and I don't have that up. I'm going to share some things I don't have up, but we'll get to the scriptures. He said, wait until you're clothed with power. 
Wait until you're baptized with the Holy Spirit before you go and do the work of the ministry. Before you go into your callings, your destiny, your purpose. Before you go into the marketplace. Before you go into the business realm. Before you go into evangelize the nations. Wait until you close with power. Amen? But you know what comes with it? Along with the Holy Spirit, along with the gifts, comes an intimacy. Comes relationship. Comes communication. Comes communion. But also comes gifts comes gifts. So the very promise Jesus said, there's something coming, wait for it. Part of that is the gifts of the Spirit, which we need. I don't know about you. I got a phone call um, a, a couple of weeks ago, and somebody said that there was a business deal that was about to fall over, but they knew it was the enemy. And I don't know what's going on, so I start praying in the Spirit. The Lord gives me a word of knowledge for the guy's client. And I said, he's going through this. I can't pray what you're asking, but let's pray for this. We pray for it. Within two minutes, he phones me back at almost 10 o'clock at night. He says, client, turned around, deal's going forward. Because we prayed for the right thing. What is that? That's not me. That's the Holy Spirit, the gift within, saying, Lord, I tap into the well. I need your help. I'm drawing from the tools you've given me in this situation. I can share lots of stories with that. Tapping into the different gifts in different situations. The gifts are for all, as the Holy Spirit wills. Not for anybody to claim it's as the Holy Spirit distributes, as you tap in, He gives them to you. But you've got to learn how to identify them and flow with them. Amen? But the number one thing for the gifts of the Spirit is to exhort and to build up and to edify the body. Yes. Not to break down. Not to speak about that man down the road or that pastor there or that evangelist there. That's the Spirit of Satan. Not the Holy Spirit. He never breaks down His body. He always builds it up. He edifies publicly, rebukes privately. Amen. <clears throat> Sorry, that's just in my Bible. Don't shoot me. Don't write letters. Send them to Lee. He won't pass them on. Anyway, so we know the nine gifts of the Spirit. Wisdom, knowledge, prophecy, right? Discerning of spirits. The gift of faith, right? But what about the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues? And that's what I want to focus on today. I'm, I'm about to rattle some people. Here it goes. Do you know that all the gifts were manifest in the Old Testament? Except for two? The gift of interpretation in tongues and, and the gift of tongues was not in the Old Testament. But all the other gifts manifested through people that God selected. Certain people. Not every people. But today we have available to us for all believers the gifts to operate in fullness. Amen? You with me? So... Let's give you some scripture so you know I'm reading from the Bible. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Hebrews chapter 2, 1 to 4. It says, Therefore, we must give most earnest heed. In other words, take notice, pay attention. That's what he's saying. To the things we have heard. So when we come to church, do we take heed and pay attention to the things that come off this platform? We only preach the word of God from this house. We won't allow somebody up here with opinions. If you don't preach the word, and if you do, it'll be the last time you preach up here. But we preach from the word of God, right? Amen. So are we taking heed to what's spoken? Why? Lest we drift away. So there's a caution, there's a warning. Are you paying attention to what you hear so that you don't drift away? For if the word spoken through angels, that's talking about the Mosaic law that was put in place, proved and every transgression and disobedience received just reward, how shall we escape the great neglect of our great salvation, which first began to be spoken of by the Lord, okay, and was confirmed to us by those who heard, everyone say the apostles, and was confirmed to us by those who heard them with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to His own will. So He's saying don't neglect the salvation, don't neglect the message, don't neglect what God has done for you. Amen? And not just that, Jesus spoke of it, the apostles confirmed it, and the Holy Spirit sealed it. Amen. How much more do we need to know what is of God and what is the truth? Come on. This is good, because it's valuable. We need to know this stuff. I'm bringing it, my friend. It's coming. Hold on. Everything's seasonal. 
So there were three facts that confirmed the salvation that he's talking about here. Number one, Jesus spoke it. Number two, the apostles confirmed it. Number three, the Holy Spirit manifested it. Amen? So he's saying, take heed to what you've seen and heard, lest you drift away. Amen? So we, we see a scripture, Jesus speaking, in Mark 16, verse 17 to 18. He says, and these signs will follow those who believe. Now listen, you can't just slap a label called Christian. You have to actually become a believer. Let me just say something. If you're a seed sower and you don't believe when you release the seed, the seed will die. You've got to release because you believe by faith. So he's saying to those who believe, these things will follow. Not to some, not to some demographics. Any believers in the house? They will speak with new tongues. Sorry, was the Messiah saying this or was it an apostle? Jesus himself. Did Hebrews not say that Jesus first confirmed, then the apostles confirmed, then the Holy Spirit confirmed? So wouldn't you take it serious that if Jesus said something, that we would pay attention to it, lest we drift away? So he's saying, if you believe, this will follow you. Not may or may not, or it's for some people, but not for all. If you believe, you will speak in new tongues. You will have a weapon given to you, a gift distributed to you, for what you need to do on this earth to succeed. To only those who believe. And by the way, you will also lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So you know what Jesus is really addressing here? He's actually forecasting the gifts of the Spirit that are about to come into the body. Do you know that? He's made mention here about demons, so the discerning of spirits, walking in believers' authority. He's speaking about the gift of tongues. Is that not a gift according to 1 Corinthians 12? Yeah? He's speaking about miracles, signs, and wonders. You'll take up things that won't affect you. That's the working of miracles. So he's addressing some of the gifts here, saying that the gifts will come upon you and you will flow in them and operate in them if you believe. I know it's good. It's from the Bible. Listen, in Acts chapter 2, I don't have it up there, from 1 to 4, in, in Luke 24 where Jesus said, wait until you're clothed. In Acts chapter 1, or so, chapter 2, 1 to 4, they're waiting up there in the upper room with expectation. There's this promise that we're waiting for. What is it? There's an anticipation and expectation. And the Holy Spirit comes down on them. And it says they were all filled with the Spirit. They all began to speak in new tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Is tongues for today? Absolutely. It's a weapon. It builds you up, and I'm going to touch on some of this morning. You know, Joel uh, prophesied that in those days my spirit will be upon all flesh. Do you know that even Isaiah prophesied about tongues? You go, really? Watch this. I haven't got it up there. I added it in last minute, but trust me, it's in there. Isaiah 28, 11. For with stammering lips and with another tongue, he will speak to his people. This is the prophet Isaiah prophesying of what's to come and says, oh, there's this gift, there's this tool that he will use to speak through. Is tongues for today. Yeah. Amen. Another tongue or other tongue is a basically a supernatural speaking, a supernatural ability to talk. Now, this is the other confusion. Some people take the scriptures and they, they, they think of it as, yeah, but it was just a different language. Okay, so how's this? If I rock up here as your pastor... And I start speaking Mandarin fluently. And people out there are going, we Mandarin and we can understand it. But I've never studied it. Is that supernatural? I didn't learn it. But the Holy Spirit gave me utterance. There's been many testimonies where that has happened in church environments. I heard of a man, a man that was uh, German or Russian. And this guy was speaking to him. He thought he was praying in the Spirit, but he was giving him a word. He says, I don't speak Russian. He says, well, you just spoke to me a whole lot of things I needed to hear. That's supernatural utterance. 
but most of it, mostly, is mysteries unto God. So not by human understanding. So in other words, this person speaking does not understand. Sometimes the one hearing could have an interpretation, could have an understanding, or an understanding or interpretation will come through someone. Do you understand this? This is important for us, church. God has really been leading us down. I'm so excited for the conference because I believe there's a rock that's going to be opened up to, to stir faith in this nation. But along with faith comes understanding how to move in the things of the Spirit. Because if we don't operate in the things of the Spirit, we ain't going to see the results that heaven wants to produce. God don't just want to get us to heaven one day. He wants to get heaven to us yeah. and through us. It can only come through the Spirit. Amen. Not by head, not by, but by flesh. We cannot be moved by intellect with the things of God. It doesn't make sense to take money, put it down, and expect a harvest. You go to most worldly financial planners, they say, you're nuts. Okay, I don't trust your investments, but I trust the kingdom because that's there. It's not going anywhere. It will produce after its own kind. Nothing wrong with financial planning. I used to be one. I'm just saying. Do you hear where I'm going? The things of the Spirit don't always make sense to the natural. But it's not up to us to make sense here. It's for us to grab it here and apply it and walk it out. Amen? Have you ever... How many trades people? We've got a few trades people. I've been in a building game a long time. I'd be horrified if a carpenter rocks up on site without a nail gun, without levels, without a drop saw. I say, well, what are you doing? Oh, we're going to build your frame. Uh, no, you're not. I don't want to lean to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know? Or you go to a financial planner and they don't have the calculating tools. You show them all the data and they go, she'll be right. <laughs> show me the tools of the trade. And we can move forward in this relationship, right? That's like the Word of God. That's like the Holy Spirit in our lives. He's given us the tools of the trade to do what we're called to do. Without the tools of the trade operating, it's not going to happen, right? Now, there's three outworkings of tongues. Three outworkings. Two are from God to man. One is from man to God. So the, the gift of tongue, or tongue if you like, in a corporate setting like this, is from God to man, but it requires interpretation. Because why? Everything is about edification. And I'm going to show you scriptures now. Don't worry, it's in there. The other one, from man to God, it's got nothing to do with anyone. It's between me and God, right? That's to build myself up. It's to tap into His wisdom. It's to tap into His supernatural strength. It's to tap into unknown mysteries with solutions I need for things I need to have revelation of. Amen? Now, sometimes he can give you revelation when you're praying in the Spirit. Down the road, something will drop in you and you go, Ah, oh, I have the answer. That could be a result of you praying in the Spirit for a half an hour earlier, even four days ago. Right? Or somebody send you a text message and go, I needed that. See, you don't know how it comes. This is the part you need to get your head out of the way. But you need to walk by the Spirit and trust God. Amen? This is, the things of the Spirit not by reasoning. There's been times we've all flowed in gifts here, and you go in, in the natural. This does not make sense, Lord. You're about to throw me under a bus. But when he shows up, you go, oh, my gosh. Had I not been obedient, Amen. how we would have missed that move. Amen. Amen? You're getting this. How many of you want to do all God has called you to do? Amen. So the gift of tongue and the interpretation of tongue is for a corporate setting. Usually in a church setting, usually in a small group, or even an intercessory group session. That's where it manifests, okay? And the whole purpose of it is to bring edification and comfort to that audience, that group, right? But everything's done in order. God has a strategy that He does things in order that it's not chaos. That's right. We've been to some meetings where you go, Dear Lord Jesus, there's no order here. See, that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't interrupt Himself. The Holy Spirit doesn't look like a circus. He does things where it's gentle, swift, and powerful. But it brings alignment and draws people closer to Christ, not away from Him. There's a balance. Amen? You with me? So, there's this myth buster I want to demythify. Is that a word? Well, now it is. Tongue should not be used in church setting is a myth. 
people would say that you have to be, uh, you have to, uh, be able to uh, cater for all types out there, right? That, that's what you hear sometimes. You have to cater for everybody. Or sometimes you might hear that it might be offensive to some, right? Okay? Or some might say, yeah, but they don't understand, right? And I'm going to get to all that. Let me just say something, and I'm going to say this with absolute love. You all know I love you all. I love you. We are not called to convert and conform to culture. We're called to conform culture to the word. So if in the book of Acts, numbers were added daily because they tapped into the gifts of the Spirit and done things in order, guess what we're going to do in this house? We're going to tap into the things of the Spirit. We're going to do it in order and balance, and we're going to see numbers added daily in these days to come. Amen? Come on. So let's review these two things quickly. One of the, 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 the myths is, because we read 1 Corinthians 14 out of context, we, we talk about where it says it doesn't profit. Tongues in, in church setting doesn't profit. But we don't read the, the latter part of it where it says, unless an interpretation comes. So anytime there's tongues in church, people would say that it doesn't benefit. Why are you doing it? Or if the worship leader is, is if Louise is leading in the spirit, why? And I'm going to show you. She's not giving a word to you. She's worshiping the king in the spirit. Got nothing to do with you. You can either get on the bandwagon or stay off the bandwagon. I love you all. But if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be telling you this because I want to see us all go to the next level. Yeah. Amen? Amen? If, I, if Pastor Ian or, or Tony or myself, if I'm praying, there will be times where there will be a prayer line. And I'll hear somebody say, this is what I need. And I'll lay hands and I'll start praying in the spirit. Does that mean I'm going to give you a word? No. I'm drawing deep in to say, Holy Spirit, what is it in this situation? Before I pray amiss, I need to know I'm praying in a line with what needed you. Because sometimes we want to pray for the fruit, but the Holy Spirit wants to deal with the root and cut it out. And in the natural, by listening in two minutes, you're not going to identify a root because all you're seeing is a fruit. And somebody wants to cut the fruit of their life, but really what we need to do is dig the root out. And sometimes one word from the Holy Spirit, you know, that's not what we're praying for, but what I'm going to pray for, we're going to take authority of this. Can you see? Everything is about how do you outwork it, how do you balance it. It's in the Bible. And I'm going to show you a few things. Amen. So, 1 Corinthians 14, 46. He says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless he interprets. So what he's saying is, prophecy is phenomenal, is great, we need it. In the age two, you would have seen, we would have gone through some of that. If you missed it, see you next time. Okay? But prophecy is of today. Prophecy is to edify, build up, exhort, lead, have God speak and drop what he wants from heaven. But when we have an interpretation of tongue, it's as powerful as prophecy. Because he brings comfort, he brings direction, he leads us, he speaks to us. You'll see Pastor Ian and Pastor Tony, they flow in it often. They flow in it often. I don't. But I'm okay because I flow in other things. I'm not moved by it. See, there's many parts and the Holy Spirit uses different. And when we come to church, it's like a buffet. Sometimes I don't like set menus. I want a buffet. Amen. I want a little bit of that, a little bit of that. That's what God does. You know, one will have a word and you're listening and going... Dear Jesus, please have an interpretation. Please have an interpretation. Please have an interpretation. And you'll see, and I can just see one of their body language. I say, here it comes. But please, Jesus, hurry up. Let the interpretation come. And it comes. It's like, bang, the Holy Spirit shows up. Amen? Can you see? So it's about how do you rightfully divide this in three ways? Is it from God to man? Is it man to God? We need to discern. But also in a church setting, you need to trust your leadership. That we understand. That we're not just going to let stuff go. We're not just going to let people prophesy in here that we don't know. Never. You've got to build relationships. So we know your heart, your intent. Yep. Know the gifting. Then go, yep, we have a witness with it. And the three of us will witness. Yep. Don't just think because there's one person leading. They all, we come together. We talk about things. We have a witness with it. We're at peace with it. It's okay. Amen? Yep. That's why you guys, you guys are blessed here, man. You guys are blessed. This house is well balanced. 
I'm telling you, it's well balanced. I'm not just saying that. I am. I am. I'm saying it, but it's true, right? <laughs> Thanks for backing me. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everything is about order. If you jump down to verse 26, it says, How then, brethren, whenever you come together, everyone say corporate, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue. Everyone say a tongue. Let all things be done for edification. Can you see the edification there? It's always for edification. Always for edification. The biggest thing is learning is, what time do we allow it? Do we allow it to happen? Is it for now? Is it for next week? Is it for the week after? Is it for this part of the service? That's the most challenging thing. Not that the gifts don't operate, but it, you don't ever want to interrupt the Holy Spirit. Right? But look what he says in verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Decently and order. And as your lead pastor, we have the ability to hold a tap to open up the gifts or shut the gifts or to regulate the gifts. That's our responsibility. I can only go as far as I feel a peace and a witness with. I can't go past that, right? Even though somebody else might think you need to go more, but I'm going, if I don't have the faith or if I'm not feeling peace about something, I'm accountable for where my face at, right? So we have a tap you can regulate. But the Holy Spirit always shows up in services knocking. He'll whisper, one of us. And we're looking at each other, Pastor Tony, Ian, myself. We'll be, I go, there's something, but I don't have it. Have you got it? Have you got it? No? Okay, well, then we wait. It's coming. Maybe it's going to come through the worship, right? Our biggest thing is our desire is to have a sense of the Holy Spirit moving and ministering and building His people. Amen? Every single time. That's our number one thing. My prayer when I stand here, I pre prayers. Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us. Have your way. I hand the service over to you. Help me to hear you. Help us to hear you. Help us to flow with you, not against you. May not, people may not always understand it, but that's our desire. Amen? So you all understand, from God to man, you'll have a tongue and interpretation. They come together to edify. You're with that. It's in our Bible. Don't tear it out. It's powerful. The one I want to talk about and spend the rest of the time on is your devotional tongues. It's one of the most powerful weapons you can have to build you up. You know, I, I'm, I'm not saying that you don't need counsel from pastors because we're there for you. We're, we're always there for you. Listen, there's times I need somebody, I say, I need you to get into agreement with me because my faith is, yeah, but I just need that extra. I just need somebody to lock arms and just help me go that extra with this thing that we're dealing with. So I'm not saying that. But you know that when you tap into the Word of God and you get it in your heart and you tap into the Spirit and you start identifying the Spirit of God moving in your life, you know that you'll need to look at man less and you'll be able to go directly to the Spirit of God Himself because He has direct access to the throne of God and that's where all your answers come from. That's where all your strength comes from. Amen? You hear what I'm saying? Think about this. Why tongues? Well, ask yourself this question. If I talk with a two-way radio, if somebody else has the right frequency, they can pick up on it, right? Right? So the enemy can pick up on it. Now, do you be intimidated by that? No, because the Word of God is powerful. If you walk in authority with faith and release it, you have authority. But there's some things we don't want him to know. So think about Morse code was used a lot in the military so that enemy couldn't intercept. When you pray in the Spirit, you are praying in Morse code, and the enemy is going haywire, going, can somebody please intercept? Something's about to happen, and we don't know where we need to be positioned. Because there's a hiding coming. Do you understand that? Can you see that? We need to get this, church. The Apostle Paul prayed more in the Spirit. Amen. Don't be scared of the things of the Spirit. Get understanding. My people perish for lack of understanding. God is saying, I want you to have understanding in these days. Listen, we're, we're in a move of God in the last days, I believe. Yeah, but they've been saying that since the apostles. Yeah, but we, we're closer. We're closer than they are. So we can say it with confidence. They were about 2,000 years out. 
We could be 100 years out, 50 years, one year, a month. Hey, praise God. I pray it doesn't happen, but some of you could get zapped, and hopefully I'm not standing preaching to an empty auditorium. <laughs> I'm first in queue. I'm fighting for the best seat, all right? Look at this. 1 Corinthians 14.2. For he who speaks in tongue does not speak to, uh, uh, sorry, speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So it's not meant to be understood with your head. It's not meant to be understood with your head. It's not meant to be understood with your head. It's not meant to be understood with your head. It's meant to be released by faith. By faith. Because deep draws unto deep. We connect to the Holy Spirit. We connect to the throne of God through the Spirit. Remember, you first the Spirit. Second, soul, will, and emotion. Your mind. Third, flesh. Most of the time we want to take on people first with the flesh. But God says, deal with it first in the spirit. Then get your emotions and will in alignment, and you won't need to deal with the flesh. Amen. Amen. Look at this. It's a heavenly weapon. Jude one twenty. But you, beloved, build yourself up in the foundation of your most holy faith. Your continuous your progress. Rise up, or rise like an edif edifice, higher and higher. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Do you know what praying in the Spirit is like? Have you ever watched a military movie? Have you ever heard them say, RPG, get down, incoming. Ba, 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 ba. Those things are like, ba, 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 ba. and they're like 50 calibers going through holes, going through metal, going through everything. Like when the RPG come out, you get out the way. Yeah? Have you heard some Christians? I've been in prayer meetings with some of you. Shaka da 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 da, shaka da da da, shaka da da da. But what's happening in the spirit? Demons are going, tongues, get down. Come on. Don't ever forget me doing this. I don't get paid enough to be a comedian. But it's so you remember. When you pray in tongues, enemy flees because they don't understand what's going on and something's happening. Something's happening in the spirit realm and you need to tap into it, church. You need to tap into it, church. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, it builds you up inside. It strengthens you. You pray hidden riches, hidden secret things. God, I don't have ideas to this, but all of a sudden ideas and answers drop into your spirit. I know what to do. I have the answer for that thing. Why? Because the gifts start manifesting in you. You start stirring it up. Amen. 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 Don't be neglecting the things of the Spirit. If it's in you, it's for you. You've got to take this thing. Don't tear out pages. Take it. Take it. Understand the lens you look through. But operate in it. Flow in it. Believe it. Because it's for every single person here. Amen. Every single person here. The Lord don't want us being naive. You with me? Look what Apostle Paul said in conclusion. I love his conclusion. I could picture him like all arrogant, like, okay, well, let me put a conclusion to this whole thing that you guys have been arguing about. If he was here, this confusion about tongues, interpretation, the gifts. Let's just conclude this thing, guys. He says this, what is the conclusion then? I will pray in the Spirit. And I will also pray in the understanding. Is he neglecting praying in English? Is he neglecting taking the word and petitioning? Is he neglecting daily having your declarations where you confess the word over things? If I got sickness, I'd take healing scriptures. I confess, I confess, I confess. He's not neglecting that, is he? He's standing on it, right? But he says, I pray in the Spirit. Look at the other one. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will also sing in understanding. Just to give you peace, Luis. Yeah. Keep singing the Spirit. It's in the Bible. Yeah. When we come to church, is it okay to sing in English? Yeah. Mandarin? Yeah. Whatever other language. Yeah. But is it a right to speak and sing in the Spirit? Yeah. Does our Bible tell us that? Yeah. So if we pray in the Spirit and sing in the Spirit in church, are we singing to man or God? No. Do we need interpretation? No. You are good students. Yeah. Give them more certificates. They all get a certificate. 
Just ask Lee for a certificate. You get a certificate today. I thank God. I speak with tongues more than you all. This is what I believe. Somebody who had one of the most radical conversions of our faith, the Apostle Paul, I believe. I mean, somebody that was actually wanting to kill Christians, persecute Christians, on the way to actually slaughter a few, has a Holy Ghost encounter. Right? Not long after that, gets baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Ghost, and he's out doing it. He writes two-thirds of the New Testament. So if we're wrong, one day we'll get up there and talk to him and say, Brother, you, you wrote this wrong. He didn't. Why? Because what did Hebrews say? It was first spoken of the Lord, confirmed by the apostles, confirmed by the Holy Ghost. So somebody that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament had seen signs, wonders, miracles, manifestations, healings, demons coming out of people. He was living, walking what Jesus said in Mark 16, that you will speak in new tongues, you will lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. He's the one that says, but above all, I got to conclude, I pray more in the Spirit than in the English. Amen. I pray more in the Spirit, church, than I do in the English. Because one thing I've realized, I don't know always what to pray. I confess the word. I decree the word. But I don't necessarily pray English all the time. Part of my prayer talk is I talk to, I talk to my Father in heaven. I talk to him like I'm talking now. We have conversations. I take the word, I declare scriptures over situations. But when I'm faced with things, I get the real weapon out. I get the RPG. And I pray in the Spirit. Why? Because it's in the Word. It's been prophesied from Isaiah. It's been prophesied from Joel. Jesus himself spoke it. So I'm going, hey, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. It's been established. It's effective. It's a powerful tool for you and I. Amen? Amen. You know, I didn't have it up, but in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 1, it says, Now concerning the spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. So two chapters earlier, when they start talking about the gifts of the Spirit, the Apostle Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant about the things of the Spirit. Hebrews confirmed it. Why? Lest you drift away. Lest you be a powerless church and a powerless generation. But I declare in this place, we're a church of power and authority and dominion. Heritage of faith will have people that are walking in the fullness of what God has. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. I don't care what's happening out there. Our responsibility as a leadership is what happens in these four walls with you. I'm not yet worried about somebody else's doctrinal theology. I'm going to what the Word of God tells us, and that's my responsibility. Because you know what's going to happen? I'm not going to worry what happened in a, a movement or get accountable before God for a movement or what's happening in a certain movement. You know what he's going to say? <clears throat> Pastor Ian, until March 2019... What did you do with your church? Denny's going to go, Pastor Sean, from uh, March 2019, what did you do with the church? So he's handed responsibility over. He goes, that's <laughs> it. Right? So when I stand before God one day, he's going to say, what did you tell my people? What did you speak to my people from that platform? I'm holding you accountable for every word you release. That's right. Not your opinion. Not your opinion, not your preference, but what is the principle? What does the word say? Did you speak it? Did you tell my people? And today I can say, yes, Lord, I spoke to them about tongues. I spoke to them about the gifts of the Spirit. I spoke to them about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Lord. I've spoken to them about each one reach one, that we all have a responsibility to go evangelize and tell people about you because you're coming soon. I've told them, Lord. Yep. Amen. Then he's going to say to you, what did you do with what he said to you? That was the broccoli. <laughs> Everything was cheese sauce up until that moment, right? <laughs> I asked the worship team to come up. I've said enough. Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. There is something I can't get away from, is that scripture. I just cannot get away from it. It's been in me for, for months now. Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Church, I want to encourage you. Jesus left us Holy Spirit. 
for a reason. Get to know Holy Spirit. Get to have communion with Holy Spirit. Get to understand His giftings in your life. Get to stir up the giftings in your life. Your giftings work outside there. Don't just wait for a church setting. The best place for you to step out on them is out there. You will see signs, wonders, miracles. Don't wait for it in church. They're waiting to happen out there in the world. The apostles didn't wait to get to the tabernacle for signs, wonders, miracles. They were in the highways and the byways. They were on their motorcycles telling people about Jesus, laying hands on them, saying, you need Jesus. I can pray for that. You can be healed. That's what they need. But it's going to be requiring us to know the things of the Spirit. Amen. You know, you ask, you listen to the message today and you ask yourself, but where do I fit in? Where does Jesus fit in my life? Maybe you asking the question, well, if something happened to me today, I'm not quite sure I would go to heaven. I'd like the opportunity to pray with you if you would allow me. If you just repeat these words, because the Bible says that if you declare and call unto the Lord, Jesus Christ, you will be saved. So I'm going to pray a prayer and I ask you, if you pray it from your heart, and confess with your mouth and believe. The Bible says you're saved. You're born again. All things are passed away and all things are new. So why don't you pray with me? Why don't you stretch your faith as I stretch my faith with you right now and let's put our faith together. I'd like to pray a prayer with you and I ask that you repeat the prayer after me. And the Bible says if you do it by faith, the Lord Jesus will hear and you will be saved. So repeat this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Forgive me of my sins. I make you Lord and Savior Jesus. I know that you died, you rose again on the third day for me. So I thank you right now that I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus because I believe on the name of Jesus and have called out on the name of Jesus. If you prayed this prayer, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away and all things on you. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, we would love to get into contact with you or hear from you. Please head on down to our website www.heritageoffaith.com.au as we would love to hear about the decision that has changed your life. God bless. We're praying for you and we look forward to seeing you soon. Love you.